is Friday morning and I wanted to show you guys what I want to pretty much maybe start as a little challenge for myself. I usually don't do very good with challenges, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm up to, what I was thinking about last night when I was falling asleep. thought it was a great idea. I'm going to start it. So I have not started using my new Stillman and Burn, what series is this? Zeta series hardback sketchbook. In case you missed it, I finished one up. I'll put the link to the sketchbook tour here. Here, here, wherever it goes. For some reason, I have not started this one. And I was thinking last night, because I'm doing more landscapes, I've been thinking about Barefoot Porter and his landscapes, which I love. So I thought maybe it would be fun to use this sketchbook to paint some of his paintings. Basically in my style, but use them to learn from and to replicate, because you learn a ton when you are replicating paintings like that. This is a short-ish sketchbook with nice paper, decent size. So I counted how many pages, there's like 26 or 27. And then I was like, well, maybe there's not that many landscapes, but there are, because I didn't really want to get stuck with doing every single one, because I'm not inspired by all of them. I really feel like I need to be inspired. So I picked a really simple one for this morning, because I don't have much time. I'm preparing for a talk that I'm doing this afternoon. Need to prepare the studio a little bit. Need to just get some things done for launching the video for today and all that. So I'm gonna use my flash paints, at least today. I may switch around, who knows? More than likely I'll switch around. I'm gonna use my flash paints. I'll show you those, got them all set up. And today I have a simple, simple landscape I'm gonna do. So let me show you that too. I thought all the lids look so cute all piled up together. Here are my flash paints. And if you're like, what in the world are flash paints? Flash paint is a brand. It was out before even acrylic paint. So it was like the first acrylic, but it is vinyl. It dries matte and I absolutely love it. It comes in these glass jars. So that's one of the reasons I really like it for my sketchbook is because it dries matte and then the pages don't stick together. The only bottle I don't like to contaminate is my white. I just have this in a smaller little tub. I haven't used these in a while, so I sprayed everybody, gave everybody a stir to kind of loosen it up. Some of them I had to do that more than others. And I've contaminated all of these. So basically I've taken a dirty brush and stuck it in these colors. And even these light yellows, you don't get any contamination. I mean, it's just really nice. So, and then did I show you the picture? I don't think I did. Let's do that. Let me show you. And that's the little landscape of his that I've chosen. Pretty simple and it's really small. At least right here it is. So I'm gonna just do that one really quick, I think. I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, I don't think I have to like announce this, but I'm gonna tell you anyways that I ended up doing a different painting. I did this one, Trees in Spring. And I always document it like this and put what I used and then that it was by me. But I want people to know this is not my original painting. I guess I need to show you the one from the book. I'll do that, but here's this one that I did. It was a lot of fun. And actually looking up this makes me want to go paint. And then here is the one that I just finished. And this one was a lot of fun too. And now that I'm looking at this, it makes me want to go paint. Did try to make it my own. I didn't copy it exact. I'm not really into that. Just really use it as reference. But these two on the page together look so pretty, very complimentary. And this one was Island something. I can't read my own writing. All right, would y'all like to see how far I've gotten along in this art? What did we call this? an art challenge that I was going to use this sketchbook for fair for Porter paintings. Ready? <laughs> like zero. Those are the only two I've done in this whole sketchbook. Uh, oh my gosh. 
Do you hear all the moaning? Cooper, what in the world? I mean, serious moaning was going on. Bud, are you feeling okay? <laughs> are you feeling grumpy? Uh, are you feeling grumpy? Did I see that tail whack? Huh? Is him grumpy or happy? Oh, a mixture of both. Uh, did mom give you a terrible haircut? <laughs> so you, mom butchered me. I took the vroom to him. Poor guy. I uh, know. He needs a bath really bad. And uh, we haven't been able to bathe him in months because he hurt his back. And so I got the shears out and was trying to get all the, like, clumps and stuff. <laughs> Say, oh, mom, you made me look real silly without my beard. <laughs> hey, bud. Sam's still a big love bug, though. A big lover, even if mom gave me a terrible haircut. Okay, let's get back to this. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Yeah, decided to abandon this challenge because it wasn't going well. <laughs> so, but that was a nice try, Sandy. Nice try. All right, there's my reference photo that I used. And here is, I'm trying to make it where there's not a glare. There's kind of zoomed in version of it. So there's his... And there's mine of that. And then let me look that one up for you. Let's see, what page does that say? 61. You know, now that I'm looking at this, this does make me wanna go paint. Oh, there it is. Ooh, isn't that a great painting? So there's his, there's mine. And here's a zoomed in version. I love you can tell he took probably the back of his paintbrush and scraped into the paint to make some of those waves. Yeah, it's just a beautiful painting. So yeah, not bad. That was fun. Maybe I'm gonna go do that again now. Maybe I'll make page three. Yeah, maybe I'm making progress. Maybe the challenge isn't over. The challenge continues. Don't, don't, don't. Just filming that little bit of B-roll for you guys or a little bit of footage for you guys got me excited. So I just opened the Fairford Porter book, found a page that I was like, yep, I like it. And I'm gonna go sketch real fast. I have a ton of work to do, but I just need to paint. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Let me go get the book and I'll show you which one. I'm gonna do this one. This is not the best lighting to show you guys. I need to get to work. I only have a few minutes to paint. I'm gonna do that. It's, I think this is a double spread, but I'm just gonna do this part. Yay. need to get this hair pulled back. I'm gonna use you guys as a little mirror. <laughs> Just get the hair out of the face. Doesn't have to look cute. Even though I am filming, that would have been nice if it looked cute, but hey, we don't have time for cute. What well, we need to paint. I'm gonna do a really, really quick sketch and just start slapping on paint. I'm so excited. I'm going to use my Liquitex acrylic 
gouache. Some of you guys asked me the difference between acrylic gouache and regular gouache. Acrylic gouache cannot be re-wet, so it's just like acrylic. The way it's different from acrylic is that it's very matte like gouache is. So gouache is like watercolor. You can re-wet it. Gouache is more matte and opaque where watercolor is transparent and vibrant. So I'm gonna use my gouache. I'm gonna use a limited palette. Here's my quick little sketch. It's just super rough. I just want to really just slap the paint on. I have my reference book right here and I'm just gonna go to town because did I already mention I only have a few minutes? Let me give you this scoop. Yesterday when I was working on this, I was like, oh yeah, I remember now why I abandoned this project. I know how Fairfield put the paint on the canvas. It's the way I used to put my oil paint on and I just don't enjoy it anymore. It's just not the way I'm painting. So I've decided just to abandon this sketch, but I do still want to take some cues from this painting. So I think what I'm gonna do is turn the page and look at the, the sketch through my value finder. You guys ask me about this all the time. This is a set that I got from Peggy Crawl Roberts. She no longer makes these, but this is just red plexiglass. We use it as a value finder. For some reason, looking through this helps you see the value. The value is just the darkness and lightness of something. This painting of his has a very strong value pattern. So I think what I'm gonna do is look at the painting through this, but try to paint it more in the style that I'm painting now and just follow the value pattern, I think is what I'm gonna do. And if I'm not enjoying that, I'm just gonna abandon it too. But I kind of like this sketch and this abandoned, abandoned state. <laughs> it's like, you know when you go into a, like abandoned house and it's not some place you wanna live, but for me at least, I want to look around and explore. So I still wanna look at this and it's still got interest, but I don't wanna live in it. Deep thoughts with Sandy Hester. All right. Mm. So um, the, that, that's my new plan. I've officially abandoned the challenge. I'm not gonna go back to it. Note to self, don't go back. But let's try it in a different way. That's what we're gonna do. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. So there's this the painting. Now let's see if we can look at it. I don't know that the camera, mm -mm, I don't think the camera's gonna, no, because it doesn't wanna focus. That's a bummer. You're just gonna have to trust me. And you may say, why don't I do this just and take a picture and do it in black and white. I tried that and it's not capturing the value like this is. This is just capturing some of the nuances of the value and I like it better. So I'm just going to do that. Y'all, I was cracking up at myself so hard watching this footage back. I didn't realize I was like so intense with my value finder looking. I can only imagine what Grady's gonna say when he watches this. We're both probably gonna laugh our heads off, but wow. Some serious intensity. I wish I had done that a little more like with some finesse or something other than what I did. I don't know. Sorry, weirdness.
I'm gonna continue on. I'm already finding this difficult to look at his painting and just think about value, but then interpret it. Like I started off doing just what I was already doing, like just painting his thing. So I'm going to turn the camera off, concentrate a little bit, and then I'll show you what I've done. All right, but while I've got the camera out, let me show you this. Yesterday, I decided to make a Constantine, right? Is that what it's called? Constantine sketchbook? Constantino? Constitution? I can't remember what it's called. I should have looked that up before I even brought this up. I have been cutting paper into, some of my large paper into square, and it's a like a rectangle shape. So I've had these strips of paper. So I thought, well, I'll make a Constantine or whatever this is called sketchbook. And did I look up any instructions or take any time to measure or do anything? Official, no. I want to show you how terrible this sketchbook turned out. Can you see how, like, nothing is square? Uh, I used probably the worst glue ever. Look how the pages, like, overlap. It'll be fine. It works. I mean, I just needed to just do it really quick and not be perfect about it. What I was thinking, though, was how it would be nice to have it, like, just something in my, that I can hold in my hand, and because all the paper's there, is pretty sturdy, and I can just hold this in my hand and do little quick sketches, and maybe what I can do is if I'm using paint, and, like, I paint here and it's wet, I can just go like that and then paint right here while that's drying. Maybe that would work. Or maybe I can just, like, hang it off the edge like that. Yeah, I think that may work. Okay, so there's a poorly made... Constantino or whatever it's called. Sketchbook. Then also I got this in the mail the other day from one of you guys. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Anything else in there? And let's see what we have. Oh, Newt, which I will read later. And, oh, Tara Kate. So pretty. Tara. Thank you. Or oh, Tara Kate. That looks like her name. Tara Kate. Okay. I just opened the card and she said the painting is a European blackbird in gouache. Wow. That's impressive that that was done in gouache. I think these are stickers and I'm really hoping they are because I have a sketchbook that I wanted to decorate. These are so pretty. Aww. Oh my gosh, look at that. Whoa, that's cool. Wow, and I'm guessing these are from her original work. That is so fun. Oh my gosh, all these birds. Thank you. These are so cool. I'm definitely going to put that, I think, on one of my sketchbooks. Fun little package. And here's Tara Kate's business card. There's her information down there. I'm done and this was far more fun to paint and I love the way it turned out. I decided to just even abandon the value pattern and just paint a little more maybe the way I would paint. It's still drying and uh, it's like I forgot I was in my sketchbook and it is chunky, chunky paint. So that's gonna be interesting. My guess is y'all probably like the first one better, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with, uh, oh yeah, look, I started laughing. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Oh. Do you want to tell everybody how you're trying to sneak in and eat the cat food and being naughty? Oh, don't tell them, Mom. 
Don't tell them. Hmm. All right. Your belly's going to be upset from all of that. Okay, go lay down. Okay, go lay down. Good boy. Oh, goodness, the big shake. What was I saying? Basically, I'm okay with if you don't like this one as much. That's fine. I mean, hello, it's for Fair Reporter. Obviously, his is better, but I'm trying to find my own voice and style. Very cute. Perfect. I love it. This next section of the video, I'm going to be opening up some new paints and then I'm gonna be doing color swatches and sharing with you what I learned while I was doing those color swatches. If you are not interested in this particular paint, I would encourage you to still watch it because I give lots of color mixing tips that can not only be used in acrylics and any brand that you're using, but also in oil and watercolor. These tips and these colors that I mentioned can be mixed in the same way in all those different mediums. A lot of color mixing things crossover in mediums. I didn't know if you knew that or not. But I just thought I'd mention that. So, oops. I don't know why that timer was going off. So, stay tuned. Even if you don't like this paint or aren't interested in this paint, I think you'll find some useful tips. Okay. A package came today. This package came really fast lately. Things have not been coming very fast. Basically, I did a really large paint order. I needed to stock up on some things. I was getting low. Oh no. Oh, one of them, the top is off. Whew, glad it comes with this. Ooh. All of this is Liquitex, either soft body or Liquitex acrylic gouache. I love the acrylic gouache, so I decided I was gonna go on and get a couple other colors because I just went bare minimum with the last purchase I did. The first thing I did, I got a ginormo of the, which one is this, Cadfree Yellow. Ooh, that top was loose too, yowzers. This must have gone on quite the, quite the ride. All right, so Cadfree Yellow Light. I love their Cadfree range. It's really great. Also got another pretty big bottle. There's the little baby ones this size. Well, heck, let me just show you. There's three sizes. I got a medium size of the yellow oxide. I really like this yellow, even more than raw sienna. I just really like this yellow oxide. I'm going through it like crazy. I also got a burnt sienna. I don't know if you remember, I talked about how they have a transparent burnt sienna and a regular burnt sienna. I like a transparent burnt sienna, but they don't have the transparent burnt sienna in anything bigger than the little babies. I'm finding that I'm going through this. So I thought, let me try the regular so I can get it in the mamma jamma if I need to. So I'll let you know what I think about the regular burnt sienna, the non-transparent. If you're wondering how I can tell a difference, because I was kind of wondering that same thing, how I'm going to tell the difference between the soft Liquitex soft body and the Liquitex acrylic gouache. That's mouthful. Is the tops. The Liquitex soft body is the white top. The acrylic gouache is this. I don't know if I've mentioned this to you guys or not, but I waited for forever to try the Liquitex acrylic gouache because a friend of mine told me it had a strong smell, but it just doesn't. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, so I've got a bunch of the Liquitex soft body, so let's keep going with that. I'm just gonna reach in the bag and show you one. Also got an ivory black because I've been using, what have I been using? Uh, ivory black and something else. I can't remember which one. Some other brand and I decided to go on and get theirs. I don't blow through ivory black, but I do use it. So I wanted to get a small bottle of theirs. Uh, I got a cerulean blue. I've been wanting to expand my blues because I've been getting more into blue. And I thought I'd try cerulean blue. I used to always have cerulean blue on my oil painting palette and for some reason I haven't had it here. I did decide to go with the Hue. They have a Hue and then they also have the regular. The Hue's a lot cheaper. And when I looked at the swatches, even though online you can't really like, you know, count on that, but I liked the Hue better. So I was like, when? 
I also got a color that kind of surprised me. Got their Cad Free Orange. The reason I decided to get that is because I've been, I don't think I've talked to you guys about this before, but I'll talk to you about it now. I think it's on my mind because I'm preparing for my workshop that's in the spring. I have been playing around with using more colors than what just the, the simple palette because I've been trying to get away from using white to lighten a color because white can just really kill a color and make it quite chalky. So I've been using an orange from some other cheap brand or from some other something, I don't know what it is, something I had for forever ago, but I've been using my orange to lighten some colors and I like it. Plus orange is a good neutralizer, so I thought I'll get a little bottle. Hey bud. He's been outside on the porch and he loves it out there, but he can't handle it for too long. And then he comes back in all excited to tell me about it. Sorry about the interruption. I can't even remember if I finished my thought, but I think I was basically trying to say that I'm trying to use other colors to lighten instead of grabbing my white. There's that. All right, next color in the soft body acrylics is Prussian Blue. The reason I picked this color up, there was a gouache that I've been using recently, but it was really dark. It was a nice blacky blue. I can easily get that color with French Ultramarine and Ivory Black. But sometimes it's nice to have just convenient colors, and that's what this is. I just thought, I'm going to get it, play around with it. It will be a nice addition. You, you won't know if you like it until you try it, so I thought while I'm buying, I'll just add that to the list. These next two colors, I just... I don't know. Why did I buy these? I've been painting flowers a lot lately. Big flower paintings. And, and then this. Light pink. I just did. I don't know. I did. And then this next one. Will I ever, ever use this bottle? Who knows? I've been trying to like turquoise or teal. I'm just not a teal person. Here I go buying teal. I don't know. I was painting a card for a collector that bought a painting, and I was like, I'm going to put teal in it. I'm going to do it. I mixed my own teal, which is really easy to do with my, what is that blue that I can't pronounce? This. That makes a really nice blue, the, 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 whatever. It makes a really nice teal, but I thought maybe if I have something already mixed on my palette, it's calling my name, I'll dip into it. But anyways, I was making this card and I was like, I'll put some teal in there. I'm just like, I just don't like that teal. It does lift a painting. I'll give it that. And what will probably end up happening with this color is that I'll neutralize it. Some burnt sienna with this, probably make a gorgeous something. All right, that's all my, man, let's just do this. Soft body acrylics. Well, mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's an armful, I can't even hold all of them. So I'll be swatching those. I'm always preaching about limited palette. The only time I go outside of that is when I start to really learn my colors. If I've got my core colors down, certain subjects I do think call for expanding that. But use what you have. And then I only got two acrylic wash. I did get the yellow oxide because I'm loving it so much. Wait, I thought I ordered, hmm. Maybe it's back ordered. I was pretty sure I got the yellow oxide and burnt sienna because I wanted to test the burnt sienna, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I just talked myself into, I do remember having that conversation. Do I just go with what I like or do I try something? Obviously I just tried. So I got some yellow oxide in that and then I also got cerulean blue. So there's that little, wasn't little, it was expensive. Maybe close to $200 worth of paint. Yeah. On to color swatching. One last tip before we start our color swatches. I like to save my yogurt tops. They're usually white and they make good little palettes. And with acrylic, once they dry, I'm okay with using paint, you know, a palette that's already got paint on it because it doesn't mess me up. And I think I'm gonna do a couple of tests also with the orange to show you how that can lighten something. So something like the burnt sienna to add a little bit of the orange instead of a white would help that, help lighten that. Okay, let me go grab my white and we'll get started on this. I'm going to use my really nice Tillman and Burn sketchbook. In my sketchbooks, I use the first page 
to do my color swatches. I always also have on my first page an if found page. Of course, I have my contact information covered up. Ooh, that's pretty. Glad I went with this hue. Now this color with some orange in it is gonna make a gorgeous neutral. Maybe we should just do that. Ooh, yeah, that makes a nice green. I forgot about that. Ooh, wow, look at that. Wowzers. Now am I gonna remember that when I go to write this? I don't know if I'm going to remember or not. That also makes a really nice brown. Better label those while I can remember. Okay. How about those colors? I mean, gorgeous. I'm thrilled. These neutrals right here make me want to go paint immediately, pronto. I mean, these colors fire me up. And these colors are what make these colors look so bright and pretty together. We are off to a good start, people. I think underneath this really, and I wanna put the orange. Let's test the orange, because those will be pretty next to each other. I'm kind of feeling like, now how was I living without this orange before? Because this is super nice. I also feel like with these paints, they don't do a major color shift when they dry, which is really nice. Now let's do our two, uh, what are these called, burnt siennas. This is gonna be the newest one, which is not transparent. Ooh, it's pretty though. Oh, it looks like it has a little bit more red tint. Okay, I think what I'll do is put them side by side. Let me do that better label. Okay. That's really pretty. And here's the transparent. Ooh, well that's pretty too. Jeez. Yeah, that makes me remember why I like the transparent. Okay, now let's add some white to the transparent. I'll do that underneath it. Ooh, I didn't leave room to write. I'm Okay, I guess I'll write it over to the side. That has an orangier tint, and I bet you when we add some white to this one, it's gonna look a little more red. To me, this looks like Indian red. Yep, I was exactly right on that. Hmm, I like them both. I mean, I hope I like the one that I can get in the bigger jar better. Now I think what I wanna do is, I uh, wish I had room. I wanted to add some orange to both of those. Those colors turned out so, so good. We are off to a great start. I'm going to put the camera down and do the rest of these. I'll pick it back up if there's anything interesting. The only thing I can think about that could be interesting is that teal mixed with some orange. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's gonna be nice. And that teal mixed with some burnt sienna. So I'll show you all those color mixes. I won't leave you out, don't worry. Okay, here's the aftermath. Not too bad, won't take too long to clean up. Ugh, look how pretty that looks. I mean, just even from a distance, hello. So pretty. There are my colors. I want you to notice, so here's the cobalt teal. I really liked it best when some white was added. I did not care for it when it was like this. I do like the Prussian blue, especially in like the white. When I get it down to a white value, I'm real happy with the pink, especially in its lighter form. I think I would use it, probably would still neutralize it some. Here's the cobalt teal with orange added. Gorgeous greens, really nice neutral, but bright cherry greens. And I think you already saw all of this over here. And I did make sure to just label so I would know these are all liqu Liquitex colors, everything from here down, because up here I was trying different brands. I'm not someone who has like really pretty color charts. I'd like to have the everything spelled correctly. That would be nice just for starters, everything spelled correctly. I'm not someone who has the patience for that and then it feels like, oh, if I mess it up, then I have to start over. I just need to be able to slap it down and that's what I do, and I don't try to write neat, and I think it looks pretty on the, at the end. I just, for me, this is like a, a working thing. Like, well, how, how would I say it? It's just, let's get dirty, let's, this isn't like put your church clothes on and go to church. This is put your work clothes on and we well, gotta just scribble and get it down. That's how I feel about my color charts. So I hope you're okay with that. I guess you'll have to be, or you'll just need to go watch somebody else. Natasha Newton has really pretty color charts. Every time she's doing hers, I'm like, see, I probably should try because these look so pretty. They're gorgeous. She always has like these oval. I love them. I found out a lot, I feel like, about these paints from just doing this. It's just so important to do these color charts. I'm going to clean up, go finish editing this week's video. 
that is it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got some great color mixing tips. I'll see you back here next week. Bye.